Week four is almost in the books, so I'm bringing you some early waiver wire and trade targets that you need to target heading into week five fantasy football. Starting it off with my first waiver wire target, it is going to be Daytavion Wicks for the Green Bay Packers. And shout out to this Packers team, this young wide receiver core. Daytavion Wicks absolutely put on a show this week where he dropped 24.8 fantasy points, had 13 targets, five receptions for 78 yards, and the part that I like about that is not only the two touchdowns was also great with that 24 fantasy points, but it was the fact that Tavon Wicks was pretty hyped up in the fantasy football Twitter space pre-draft. And we've been waiting first three weeks. He had two zero weeks. He had an 11 point week. And then of course, in this week four game, he absolutely broke out. Now, one of the main reasons that Detavion Wicks broke out in this game is going to be because Christian Watson ended up getting hurt. But what is new? Christian Watson always seems to end up on the injury list. But when we're looking at this overall snap share for the Green Bay Packers. We had Detavion Wicks with 58 snaps, 59 snaps for Jaden Reed, and then 65 overall snaps for Romeo Dubs. Now, Jaden Reed and Dubs both had eight targets, but but Tavion Wicks ends up with 13 total targets. And I think that's the part that makes me so excited is not only did he have a ton of snaps as the clear three wide receiver in this offense, he also got the targets. He has the Jordan Love trust factor. So I absolutely love some Detavion Wicks going forward. He's my first waiver wire ad. Absolutely got to be excited about this Green Bay Packers offense with Jordan Love back in the helm. My second waiver wire target is going to be Josh Downs for the Indianapolis Colts. And the part that we want to hit on with Josh Downs is it seems to be that he absolutely does electric with backup quarterbacks. And so when we see last year, Gardner Minshew for Josh Downs really caused Josh Downs to have kind of a little bit of a breakout. And this year it's causing Joe Flacco to be the guy where Josh Downs ran 41 snaps compared to 58 and 55 for Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman Jr. Ran 23 routes run and had nine total targets. And those nine total targets translated to 22 fantasy points, eight receptions, 82 yards, and one total touchdown for 10.25 yards per target. He was coming off that injury early on in the season. And not that Anthony Richardson was really struggling with the ball, but it's very clearly evident that Joe Flacco is a better pass catcher because Joe Flacco single-handedly just revived Michael Pittman Jr.'s career. And I think he could actually boost Josh Downs' overall value going forward. Now, like we said, the injury for Anthony Richardson, how long is that going to keep him out? I don't know. But seemingly, this offense looked a lot better. Not only Jonathan Taylor, but Josh Downs in the remaining opportunity that he got with Joe Flacco. So for me, if I miss out on Detavion Wicks, I'm 100% targeting some Josh Downs because not only did I like him as a prospect last year coming in as a rookie, but I absolutely love him going forward. The next guy that you need to be hitting on the waiver wire for is going to be Xavier Leggett, wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. We talked about Xavier Leggett on Saturday as a mustache level player for you on your bench. So if you tune into that video, we are hitting on Nuggets. We hit on Michael Wilson last week, but Xavier Leggett absolutely needs to be added on your roster. Now, I do prefer Josh Downs and Detavion Wicks this week, but Xavier Leggett has the pedigree as a first round wide receiver drafted to the Carolina Panthers with 19.6 fantasy points, 10 targets, six receptions, and had one total touchdown. Deontay Johnson looked great, but so did Xavier Leggett. So Andy Dalton, I know it was a it was a game script versus Cincinnati where they were down, where they had to throw the ball late. But I think it's everything that we want to continue to see out of a rookie level wide receiver that we compared very similarly to a guy like a Debo Samuel. And when we're looking at this overall snap share, I mean, Xavier Leggett had the most snaps on the team, had 61 snaps, 37 routes run, and 10 total targets. Deontay Johnson, Mr. Target Hog himself, had 13 targets. And the part that we have to kind of talk about is Xavier Leggett got two carries as well. So honestly, he had 12 overall volume compared to 13 for Deontay Johnson. And that's exactly what I love to see, especially Jonathan Mingo seeing a little bit of snaps but not getting the targets. We've been around that ring of number old last year. Xavier Leggett, 100% a guy that you need to be adding on the waiver wire. The next guy we're going to be talking about, Bucky Irving, is pretty a standard why you might be potentially wanting to add Bucky Irving on your team. Absolutely overtaking Rashad. Rashad White as the one. I know Rashad White was dealing with a little bit of an injury, but I don't care. You need to be adding Bucky Irving. We don't need to dive into the metrics. Bucky Irving is a guy that you need to be adding. Tank Bigsby is the next guy that I would like to talk about. Tank Bigsby is surprisingly taking over more of the snap share than I thought possible with Travis Etienne. He had a seven attempts this week for 90 yards, 12.86 yards per carry. And when we look at the overall snap share chart for the Jaguars, the thing you're going to notice about it versus the Houston Texans is that Travis Etienne had 30 snaps and Tank Bigsby had 17, 11 carries for Travis Etienne and seven carries for Tank Bigsby. So we'd love to see uh, Travis Etienne get a little bit better. But like we said, this was not a great game script for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They were coming back in the second half. Now, if we take a look at this overall running back usage, Travis Etienne is still getting a bulk of the pie, but Tank Bigsby is starting to work into the early down work, 
is getting a lot. He got three goal line touches compared to Travis Etienne's. And so if he's going to be getting those goal line touches over Travis Etienne, Travis Etienne owners, we need to start panicking. Tank Bigsby, definitely a guy later on that you need to be adding on your waiver wire. And I'll add one more caveat for a guy like Ray Ray McLeod as a guy that you might be wanting to add on waivers. Not that I want to add Ray Ray by any stretch of the imagination, but the fact is he did have 11 fantasy points this week. He's had nine, seven, five. He had seven targets for six receptions, 52 yards. And somehow Kirk Cousins loves himself some Darnell Mooney. He loves himself some Ray Ray McLeod. And Drake London continues to be a guy that he did get 12 targets this week, but we do want to see a lot more coming from this wide receiver core. A guy like Kyle Pitts, we wish we'd get more involved. But 55 snaps, 30 routes run, six overall targets. Definitely a deeper stash for a guy like Ray Ray. Now, talking through some trade targets that you might want to start considering heading into week five fantasy football. The first guy is going to be J.K. Dobbins. And J.K. Dobbins has kind of been a letdown over the last two weeks. But the part I want to highlight with J.K. Dobbins is he's gone up against two front sevens that have been very good between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Kansas City Chiefs. 15 and 14 attempts, and he's rushed for less than 50 yards in both of these matches. I think J.K. Dobbins is a guy that I'm 100% looking to go get because we did see the 20 and 22 fantasy points earlier this season. Now, that was against Carolina. That was against the Raiders. So you're saying, Caleb, now he's going up against legit competition. He's on a bye next week. So I think whoever has J.K. Dobbins, he didn't perform for you the last two weeks, and then he's not going to perform in week three. Definitely think this is a guy that you could potentially buy low. We'll definitely talk about him a little bit later on this week as giving you some actual trades. But just starting off off the top, I think J.K. Dobbins is a great buy target. The next guy that you should be trying to buy onto your fantasy football team is going to be Debo Samuel, who returned a week earlier than I was expected with that calf strain, put up 10 fantasy points, which was great. Five targets for three receptions, 58 yards, but he did not find the end zone. I want me a chance at trying to get a Debo Samuel onto my team. Main reason is we know Debo Samuel can be absolutely electric. Like week one, he had 18. Week two, he had 18. Like we said before, he had that calf strain that he pulled in practice. So I do think we're going to continue to see Debo Samuel once he gets back to full health, absolutely emerging for you. And so I just want to get a piece of it. I don't care if I have to pay fair market price for Debo Samuel right now. I think that's a great deal to be having. I know he's the overall player 28 right now in the wide receiver rankings. And next week, he does have the Arizona Cardinals in a high scoring matchup for Vegas. So absolutely love some Debo Samuel. Taking about my next player that I would be buying, it's going to be Brock Bowers. And this tight end landscape has been an absolute crapshoot where Brock Bowers, 11, 18 fantasy points his first two weeks, and then he had seven and five the last two weeks. And seven and five, that's not winning you any crazy leagues. And especially with how we've talked about like a guy like a Mark Andrews or talked about a guy like a Dalton Kincaid, a Sam Laporta, a Trey McBride, where they haven't been putting up seriously good fantasy football production. You might be like, Caleb, why are you telling me to buy some Brock Bowers? It's because Brock Bowers, those first two weeks with that snap share and with that target share, absolutely demolished for fantasy football and was on an elite level trajectory for a rookie level tight end. Now, the last two weeks, four and three targets, three targets against the Cleveland Browns. That's not what we like to see with two receptions, 19 yards, 9.5 yards per carry. Not, just not good numbers for our guy, Brock Bowers. And so going forward, you might say to me, Caleb, like, why are you excited about Brock Bowers? I mean, if you take a look at the snap share, the target share, the opportunity for this week, it could be better. It could be better. I think they're going to get in better game scripts where they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more. This game against the Cleveland Browns was just a little bit clunky. For me, I'm still rocking with Brock Bowers. I still have Brock Bowers as my tight end one rest of the season. I know that seems really bold after just seeing what we just saw Brock Bowers do, but I am still very confident in Brock Bowers going forward. And my last and final guy that I'm going to be trying to buy is going to be Brees Hall. And listen, I understand whoever has Brees Hall, they drafted him with a first round level pick, a top four to five pick most likely. And so trying to trade for Brees Hall right now might be very hard and very impossible, but we'll talk about him too on Tuesday's video. Three points today with 10 attempts for four yards, five targets for two yards. And listen, the last few weeks, 18, 24, 18 fantasy points. A lot of people are worried about Braylon Allen saying, hey, Braylon Allen's capping the overall upside, especially after Braylon Allen this week. He didn't have three fantasy points. Braylon Allen had five fantasy points. We want to see Brees Hall continue to kind of maintain. But the last few weeks, 82, 72, 71% snap share. We did have Brees Hall getting 51 snaps versus 27 snaps for Braylon Allen. So Braylon Allen's definitely taking more work than expected. I understand that. But when we're looking at routes run, Brees Hall is still the predominant back out of the backfield. He did out target Braylon Allen four to one and did have 10 carries to eight carries for Braylon Allen. So you might be saying the carries are a little bit worrisome. We need some more volume for Brees Hall, which I 100% agree with. I just think we're dealing with the issue of them just kind of doing this two back system, which I think is going to keep both of them healthy. We just need to see the Jets being a little bit more aggressive in scoring situations because it was a pretty low scoring game. It was a bad weather game, but let's be clear. The, the score says that 10 to nine was not a high scoring game. So it wasn't a 
great game script for a ton of touchdown opportunities for either Braylon Allen or Brees Hall. So I do think Brees Hall is a guy that I still think going forward, especially with how we've seen the running back landscape go. We're talking Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson still is the top two running backs in fantasy football currently for me. So I'm still going to look to try to trade for Brees Hall. So if you like fantasy football, if you like winning, hit that like and subscribe button. I hope you won your week four matchup. We are helping you win your week five matchup and beyond. So hit that like and subscribe button. Join a growing fantasy football community from the ground up. Appreciate you guys so much. Check out these two videos if you haven't, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.